The battery specialists at Fortress Power have officially unveiled their whole home energy storage system solution with Avalon. The Avalon whole home combines a hybrid inverter, a high voltage battery, and a smart energy panel. Here to make the pitch today is Fortress Power Solutions engineer, Afkandil. You've baked a, a lot of value into the whole system here that we'll be getting to um, in this uh, pitch video today. But let's so, so let's start kind of building that case and look at the Avalon. Let's start with the smart energy panel. The first question, must the Avalon be installed with the smart energy panel or is that optional? As of now, at least, um, the Avalon system is the system which happens to have um, three types of components. One would be the inverter, the other one would be the battery and the smart energy panel. So the idea is when you purchase the Avalon system, the SCP is definitely included. And matter of fact, one smart energy panel makes one Avalon system because you can have multiple inverters, multiple battery units, multiple uh, battery modules per unit, obviously, but you always have one smart energy panel per Avalon system. Why, why should I want to install the smart energy panel? What's, what's cool uh, and different, what differentiates it from others? Yeah, so the whole idea behind the smart energy panel is that it combines everything AC because the inverter output from the point of view of the smart energy panel or whatever receives the inverter output, that's just another AC source. So generator, AC coupled solar, grid, main electrical panel, critical load panel, EV charger, which is separate and it has its own load shedding, and up to three Avalon inverters. So when you are installing the Avalon system, you can have up to three inverters in there and you don't have to worry about putting in the combiner panel, distribution panels or whatever. You just install the smart energy panel, which you have already paid for since you have um, purchased the Avalon system. And it does the job of combining everything together. And the great thing and the big thing about it is that if you're doing whole home backup, most of the time you have to install the critical load panel. But here, if you're doing whole home backup, you just retain your main electrical panel and take advantage of the load shedding circuits that we have uh, built into the smart energy panel. And the smart energy panel has 12 positions. And I was wondering how I can divvy that up, if you could give me some examples. And for like larger loads, like um, an air conditioner, like does that have its own special spot? Very strictly speaking, uh, there are 14 load shedding ports because there are two dedicated specifically for EV charger. Um, theoretically, that could be repurposed for something else, but out of the box, it's a load shedding circuit for the EV charger that you're going to install and it can support the level two EV charger, which is great. So if you're trying to uh, load shed a split phase circuit, you're going to use two uh, load shedding elements. If you're working with a single phase load, you're going to use just one. So you can have six split phase circuits, 12 single phase circuits, or any combination of the two. HVAC is a big load and it's most definitely a split phase load. So for HVAC, you're going to use at least a pair of load shedding uh, circuits. So now we'll move a little bit more to the energy storage side of the Avalon. Looking at the spec sheet, I see that the Avalon ESS sports a 95% round trip efficiency, which seems like higher than most that I've seen. Can you explain how you accomplish that uh, versus the competition? Our batteries always have been 48 volt batteries and they were connecting to each other in uh, parallel. Here, our battery modules connect to each other in series. So we have high voltage batteries now and more modules you have, you can have up to six of them per unit, um, the higher the voltage becomes. Because it's a higher uh, voltage system, the natural efficiency is there. Because higher the voltage, right, uh, for the set amount of power, lower is the current. Lower is the current, uh, lower are the uh, losses uh, related to uh, heat that uh, the conductor generates. Also, another thing is that the DC coupled PV is a high voltage circuit as such. You have multiple um, PV modules connected to each other in series. So high voltage battery is closer in terms of voltage to the PV strings that you're connecting to the inverter, which means the, that the MPPT and the charge controller, uh, they don't have to work as hard to bring the really high voltage down to 48 volts. Also, we have the inverters that are MOSFET based 
it will be extremely difficult if possible to achieve such efficiency if we had transformers inside our inverters, which we don't. The stackable battery capacity ranges from 14.7 to 29.4 kilowatt hours. Um, and then that's scalable up to 176.4 kilowatt hours. I was wondering why it's stackable to 29.4, considering like 20 kilowatt hours is a seemingly a cap for residential, unless I'm off in my assumptions there. The smallest quantity of battery modules that you can have per unit is three, each of them being 4.9 kilowatt hours. So three of them would give you 14.7 kilowatt hours. And on top of those three, you would have the battery management uh, unit. By adding additional modules, you would increase uh, the system voltage with each module by 48 volts and you would increase the system energy capacity or battery energy capacity by 4.9 kilowatt hours so the having four uh, modules stacked on top of each other would keep you under that 20 kilowatt hour um, limit but it's not really necessarily a limit because uh, if we refer to NFPA 855 code, when it's talking about the uh, kilowatt hours per battery unit and separations, uh, it always has this uh, line, which um, I'm going to rephrase it a little bit, but essentially what it means is that if you have completed large scale fire testing, and this is now a quote, the AHJ or authority holding uh, jurisdiction shall be allowed to consider um the energy storage capacity per unit greater than 20 kilowatt hours so if um the ahj uses that power then uh you can have units up to 50 kilowatt hours and you can have smaller separation distances and that all comes down uh, to the large scale fire testing which we have completed and we have certifications to prove it and to support it and we have passed the test so that's why in the jurisdictions which from my experience is the majority of the jurisdictions that pay attention to such certifications you would not be capped to that uh to those 20 kilowatt hours and when it comes to those fire codes too it's always uh, worth clarifying the avalon has is listed to ul 9540 correct yes we both have ul 9540 and 9540a certificates can you explain the active heating and passive cooling temperature management i'm not aware of other systems on the market that have the active heating built in to my knowledge this is the first one to have such technology and it was very easy for us to do if i'm being honest because um as you know we have commercial systems as well and um, some of the technology from the commercial systems easily trickles down to uh, the residential batteries and the good example of that would be um also the active fire suppression system which is inherent to uh, every single battery module. So per battery module, you have active heating, fire suppression system built in, and more of a heat redistribution. So all the cells are at the same temperature. So the wear, in quotation marks, obviously, is more even from cell to cell. Uh, that contributes to the uh, longevity of the battery unit. But active heating, the way it works is that the cells are wrapped by the heater and the battery takes care of itself. So uh, when the temperature drops below a certain point, I think now the set point is either 35 or 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the temperature goes below that, the heating turns on and it uses the battery power. It doesn't need the grid or PV as long as the battery has its um, energy capacity beyond 20%. Kilo, uh, 20 it uses the um, energy from the battery to heat up the battery, which allows us to expand the battery operating temperature range even further because as you know um, we use lithium ferrophosphate cells in our batteries all of them are grade a lfp prismatic cells lithium cells generally are not charged if the temp you know, the cell temperature falls um, below the freezing point so if the temperature is below 32 degrees fahrenheit and you start charging the lithium battery it could collapse the cell uh, internally so um our heater gives you 10 degrees Fahrenheit edge over the environment temperature or the um, ambient temperature. And also in terms of discharge, you have broader temperature range to work with. And that matters a lot in the northern states. And that, that leads into what is maybe 
the most uh, astounding f fact of the Avalon whole home to me is that uh, it comes with a 15 to 25 year warranty, uh, you know, kind of bundled in, I think with that power path loan program that you have there too. Yeah. Um, um, so just in general, wanted you to talk about how you're able to offer th those lengths of warranties and how that works. So uh, you have Smart Energy Panel, which has a five-year warranty. You have Inverter, which has a 10-year warranty. Uh, and you have batteries that have 15-year warranty, which with PowerPath program can be expanded to 25 years. Obviously, uh, that uh, will have some effect on the upfront cost. But in general, we really have great warranty terms. And those are not numbers out of the thin air because we've been in this business for a long time and we have credibility in the industry and we've been using consistently the cell chemistry that allows us to deliver the most cycle life the next thing is that um, this is fully fortress power environment so everything here is fortress power uh, controlled and fortress power design they're all um, designed in a way that they need to work with each other really really well and it has to be controlled environment so the inverter cannot do something unpredictable or, or the user cannot run it over the red line by that affecting the battery negatively. So this is one fortress power environment which establishes the smooth, smooth operation of the system and keeps the system out of reaching the extremes. Also, the heater, extreme temperatures affect the battery negatively. So because we have such a good temperature redistribution with the passive cooling that we referred to before, because we have the heater, again, we're trying to keep our systems as much away from the guardrails or the red lines as possible. You painted that picture of like, I see how all the nuances of this, the finely tuned work together and offer yes. these advantages, you know, versus, uh, you know, just what's typically out on the market. So very cool. And I, I don't mean to give it short shrift, but it's the last but not least. Uh, the the inverter that comes with the system um, is either 7.6 or 11.4 kilowatts. That is um, can be AC or DC coupled. Has four MPPTs. Is there any other role that factors in importantly for the whole home system? First of all, none of the AC power sources connect to the inverter directly. So uh, yes, the inverter works with the AC coupled PV, but that AC coupled PV directly connects to the SCP rather than the inverter. The inverter then, yes, will do a good job of taking that power and charging the battery or discharging the battery to the load through the inverter. But the only AC that you have on the inverters is the uh, grid ports so that the inverter can work with the grid and the load ports so that the inverter can uh, deliver power to the loads when the grid is unavailable. You mentioned that we have 7.6 kilowatts uh, and 11.4 kilowatts as our inverter um, options, which is absolutely correct. Yes. And as the names suggest, those are the independent uh, AC outputs. So if you have a nothing, no grid, no generator, no nothing. You just have your either battery or DC coupled PV. So something that directly connects to the inverter. The maximum AC output can be uh, 11.4 kilowatts if you have 11.4 kilowatt inverter or 7.6 kilowatts if you have 7.6 kilowatt inverter. But it is very, very important to em emphasize one thing. On the DC side, these inverters are the same. So they can, both models can um, digest or work with the PV arrays up to um, 18.2 kilowatts. So roughly 4.5, or if you really want to be precise, 4.56 kilowatts of power per MPPT. You have four separate MPPTs for four strings. So even if you have pyramid-shaped roof, you will be fine because the system will maximize the output of your PV array. And also, when the PV is working, if your PV production is over your AC consumption, obviously that power will go to the battery. But there's another thing to keep in mind. Even if you're maxing out on the AC output from the inverter, let's say you have 11.4 kilowatt inverter and you're using all of the power to power the loads or export to the grid, 50% of that simultaneously can be going to the um, batteries up to 50%. So for example, if you're outputting 11.4 uh, kilowatts AC, right? 50% of that would be 5.7 kilowatt, uh, kilowatts of power. So up to 5.7 kilowatts, if your PV production allows, uh, allows for that, can be sent to the battery to charge it. 
So you're not capped at 11.4 kilowatts. You're capped at 11.4 kilowatts of AC output, but the total output would be 11.4 kilowatt AC plus uh, 5.7 uh, kilowatt DC, which will go to the battery. I um, figured that this will be important and useful to mention because I was talking to the customer yesterday and uh, he was not aware of that. That's a valuable bit of information, I think, especially for how systems are being designed and, you know, and the future proofing of systems, uh, solar plus storage and all that. We're not trying to cannibalize the 48 volt products with the AMO one. We're just trying to give our customers the complete package. That's why the load shedding was introduced with the M1 and everything else. So the idea is that um, once you purchase the M1 system, you also maybe purchase uh, three or four breakers, some cables, and you're good to go. This was uh, great to uh, get a crash course in. And I just wanted to say thanks for taking time to stop by and make the pitch today, Gio. Sure thing. My pleasure, Chris.